What's going on guys? So today we are in the 2022 Toyota Tundra 1794 edition four wheel drive pickup truck. This has that super, super powerful twin turbo with the air ride suspension in the back every conceivable feature you could probably add to one of these. And today's video is gonna be really interesting because I'm gonna use a feature that this truck has, which is its trailer backup assist feature, to see if I can back up my little silver utility trailer without touching the steering wheel. It's supposed to help you do a straight line backup uh, very effortlessly and very easily while kind of manipulating steering and everything it needs to do and not having to use stickers or anything else on the trailer like some brands require. So we're gonna put this thing to the test and it's going to be really interesting to see how this maneuvers the trailer going straight back guys hang tight i'll be right back before we get started with the video i'd like to take a moment and thank rv snap pads the sponsor of this video rv snap pads attach permanently to your rv's leveling jack so you don't have to carry around blocks of wood or plastic blocks to level your fifth wheel travel trailer or motorhome they make snap pads for just about every rv leveling system they are an awesome solution to a common rv problem and we've installed them on our own rvs simply lower your jacks onto them and watch them snap into place and you're all set RV snap pads are available for my official channel sponsor, eTrailer.com. So on the back of the truck, we're using this little two-way Kurt hitch that I have. Got this from my sponsors over at eTrailer. This thing is super cool. It's rated for like 16,000 pounds. It's got the uh, the two and five sixteenths inch ball and the two inch ball. My small trailer uses a two inch ball, so I flipped it around. It is a drop hitch and I think it can go down like six, six and a half inches. One thing that's kind of interesting and I'm not a big fan of is how Toyota actually does their little receiver back here. Because I use a pin that's designed to fit this size of receiver, it's a two inch opening, but because the two inch sleeve seems to be in a wider sleeve and it has this big flange right here, it's very difficult to get the pin in place. So if you get a new Tundra, you're gonna wanna get a longer pin. You're probably gonna wanna get one that's designed for like a two and a half inch receiver versus versus the two inch because yeah, this was a total pain to get this pin in, especially with the other one that I had that just had a hole that you had to slide the pin through kind of like this. It was very, very difficult. Actually, I couldn't do it with the other one. I had to switch to this pin instead. Thankfully, I got a lot of them laying around, so it worked out okay. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and reposition the truck over there and uh, hitch up to the uh, silver trailer, pull it out there and see how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna use this massive 14 inch screen to back my truck up and position it in front of this trailer. I'm not even looking outside, I'm just using the screen right now. Mm, just about perfect. The little flickering you see is only because of the camera. The screen itself doesn't actually flicker. Okay, so we are back here, gonna go ahead and hitch everything up. I have it set kind of low just for the purpose of the video. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get the hitch ball underneath the coupler. Oh, that was cool. So you kind of saw the air ride pick up the back a little bit. Now, this was kind of interesting. Right when I got to the point to where the ball looked like it was under the coupler, the automatic braking system, the emergency braking system to prevent you from hitting something behind you kicked in and it stopped me right here. Now, I don't imagine that was intentional for the purpose of hitching up. It, it, I think it just kicked in because the sensors were so close and the camera saw something back here. But you're probably gonna wanna turn that feature off whenever you're hitching up to a trailer because it can be a little, uh, a little jarring on you mentally to all of a sudden see brake and the thing comes to a screeching stop. But it certainly lined the ball up under the coupler, so I definitely appreciate that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. I'm gonna use the automatic retract feature and it looks like it's close enough in line that it should just drop right on. And I wanna see if the suspension kicks in here to level everything off. I suspect it will. I can see the suspension dropping under the weight of this incredibly light trailer. And it should start lifting up here any second. I hear the compressor kicking in and I see it lifting up very, very slowly, but it is lifting up. There it goes, it's a little faster now. Very cool. 
leveled out perfectly. So it just really helped return the truck to a level stance. Gonna go ahead and get everything locked in place. Let's pin out, put these in place first. Chains are crossed, just in case you're wondering. Then we got our seven-way connector right here. Go and hook that up. No trailer brakes on this trailer because it's so light. So if you don't see me hooking up my emergency breakaway, it's because there is no emergency breakaway. Looks like the jack is probably about five inches off the ground. I don't think that should be much of an issue. I'm gonna see if I can raise the suspension up just a little bit to get a little bit more height right there, but you can't see it, but there's a slope right here too. So the trailer is actually on a slope. It's about three inches higher right there. So it'll probably be higher off the ground once I pull it off the slope. But again, let's see if we can raise the back up a little bit. All right, so back inside the truck, I'm gonna press this button up right here and I can see, let's see. It's hard to say where it's, okay, right here. You can see where it says hi. So let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, it's definitely raising up. Wow, that raised up significantly. Check it out. So the jack looks like it's probably another three inches off the ground. That's actually kind of perfect. Now I was in another vehicle that had a similar type setup. I think it was a Ram and it automatically kept lowering it back down. So I'm hoping that this doesn't do the same. I hope I can keep it at this height whenever I'm, I'm doing all these little towing tests and everything else, but we'll find out. Okay, so, see that tree right about there? That's about where we're gonna start, and we're gonna try to back up to here, which is really close to the uh, dump trailer. I'm gonna surmise that's probably 300 feet. We're gonna pull way out here. Uh, we're gonna put this in its trailer reverse mode, which is this feature right here. And just to kind of practice real quick, and here's our trailer brakes, if this actually had trailer brakes, which it doesn't, the actual trailer. I'm going to put this in park. I'm going to press this button right there. It is now on. I can add a trailer. Huh, so let me add a trailer. Oh, there we go. Add a new trailer. Utility. We're going to say cargo trailer. Length. Because I think you have to set all this up so it knows specifically. That has auto. That's kind of cool. We're just, we're just going to stick with that. Brake type. Uh trailer brake controller off because there's no brakes on it. We're going to save that. You want to save it? Yes. All right. So we've selected the trailer. We're going to go ahead and go to the front here. And I'll record this so you guys can see just how far it is. All right. So that's probably 100 feet right there. All right. So... Okay, so we've gone a pretty good distance. And the reason why I'm doing this right now is because, and by the way, there's the uh, trailer in the back. The reason why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it is because at the Toyota Drive event, um, I actually used the truck with this feature and it didn't really help me that much. I wasn't really happy with it. So I ended up doing it myself. And the Toyota uh, engineer who was standing there actually said, man, you do that better than the system can do it. So I'm not trying to brag, it's just, whenever you're towing a trailer, a lot of it comes down to your own confidence in towing a trailer and your confidence in your ability to do certain maneuvers. So for me, I am so accustomed to backing a trailer up that I really don't need a system like this to help me. And in some cases, it can actually make you feel less confident because you're having to relinquish control of something you're so used to doing yourself to a computer hoping that it's gonna do it. Let me give you an example. When, uh, when this started today, and I knew I was gonna do this little feature, I thought about actually hauling the dump trailer to the landfill, 
and then using the system to back it in place. But then I started thinking about it. You have so many eyes on you from so many different people, including the guy working the landfill trying to back you up, and all the vehicles waiting in line behind you just wanting you to finish so you can get out of there and they can dump whatever they have, that if the system didn't work for me, I would get super stressed out. I would just, I would literally probably start sweating. Just the same feeling I guess people who don't know how to back a trailer up would feel if they had to back a trailer up for the first time. So, uh, you know, this to me in this environment is a little bit more practical because I get to do it multiple times if I need to. If it works perfectly the first time, then the video will be a lot shorter than it probably would have been. But yeah, I get to just experience how the system works in a non-stressful environment because not backing up the trailer myself is actually something that makes it more stressful for me. Okay, so we have backed up to the entrance of the gate right here, which is probably 150 feet from the very end and you can see my my tire marks right there at the very end I'm gonna put the truck into their uh, the trailer reverse assistance hit continue okay so step one of six drive straight forward slowly let's try to do that again I think this constitutes slowly and even says it right here I just don't know how far ahead it needs me to go because, oh, there we go. Step two, stop the vehicle. Okay, the blue line, is the blue line aligned with the center of the camera view? Um, kind of, yeah, pretty much. What if it's not? Let's see what happens. Okay, so it wants me to drive forward again slowly. I guess it wants the trailer to be perfectly straight. That's the thing. There we go. All right. Yes, it is. So let's press yes. Drive forward slowly and make a sharp turn. Drive forward slowly and making a sharp turn. Step three. Let's see if it switches to step four here in a second. Continue straight forward to a line trailer. You really need a lot of room to make this work. Step four, step five, stop. It's calibrating. I think it may be pairing it to this specific trailer perhaps. Okay, so switch to reverse to activate. So I think what we were doing here was actually getting the truck to identify this specific trailer. I don't know if we need to do this again, but we'll find out. So reverse to activate. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to push. Is it right here? Oh, right there. There we go. It's actually here. And all of a sudden, the everything started moving. So, okay, so your straight path assist button is actually on the steering wheel right here. And I don't think I have any trees before I get to where I'm lining up. I see the steering wheel moving on me. Uh, it's veering off a little bit, but... Okay, it's straightening back out. Interesting. But yeah, it seems like you only have to program it once with a trailer. Now, I'm going to go and circle back around and try to do the test the way that I wanted to do it originally with the same area. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pull up this way until I'm essentially straight in line with this tree. Alright, once I get right here, I'm going to see how well this backs me up. So I'm going to mute that. I'm going to press this button to turn it on. Steering wheel moved. And uh, I'm going to get my buddy Mark out there to start filming from the outside. And I'm not going to touch the steering wheel. So we're just going to see what happens. And what I want to see if we can do is get through the gate, through the wooden gate back here. Because again, it's probably, at this point, it's probably over 200 feet away from me. So I wanna see if I can back up over 200 feet and get this thing threaded through the gate without me touching the steering wheel. Let's find out.
Okay, so from that tree up there, it kept me going reasonably straight to about this point, but then the trailer started kind of going off to the right a little bit. Um, if I kept going back, I certainly wouldn't thread through the opening in the gate. I would probably hit this post. And so you kind of can tell. Let me stand kind of looking down the side of the trailer and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, you know, this is an interesting thing because Again, the system utilizes kind of the cameras and the sensors to determine wh whether you're going straight back. And because there's no stickers or anything on the A-frame for the camera to reference, it's kind of guessing. And it did better than the truck in San Antonio during the media drive, but it still kind of struggles, especially for a longer distance like this. And this could be a real scenario for a lot of folks if you have to back into an area. Um, for the most part, it kept the trailer kind of straight, but... But this gate is incredibly wide. I mean, this gate is probably at least 18 feet wide. So the margin here was that, you know, it had a significant amount of space. And then the other question people might ask though is, is you know, was I perfectly straight this way? And was I at an angle anyways? But we drove straight through the gate up to the tree. So technically the truck and trailer should be right about where I'm standing right now. And you can see actually the tire marks right here where we went straight up. And this right here is the left side tire marks. So yeah, it kind of deviated off course. Well, you know, not too great. If you would have been on a boat ramp, I don't know if it would have put you right down the center like you're aiming for. Now, it can certainly help and it can certainly make the process maybe a little bit less stressful for those of you who don't tow a lot. But for me, I don't know if this is gonna be something I would wanna use personally. Now, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna have my buddy Mark operate the camera again from back here. I'm gonna pull straight up to that tree without the system and try backing up without the system, just to see how, how far back I can go in a straight line and to see if I can make it up to this gate. So let's see how that works out. All right, so back behind the camera. As you can see, uh, you know, for me personally, just doing it myself is, is something that works a little bit better. Um, it worked out real well, just backing straight up. But again, it's a little nerve wracking for people who don't do it very often. And I could see why a system like this exists. I don't personally think I would use it very often. It's cool to see it. And I think for shorter distances, it would probably work well for folks after you configure it for your specific trailer. Um, but you know what? I guess for those of you who need it, it's going to come in handy. What I'd really like to know is if you have a truck that has a system like this, do you use it? There's a lot of folks that are buying new Super Duties that have a system like it. A lot of folks are buying new, new uh, Ford F-150s that have a system. Those of you with the uh, Toyota that have the system, uh, Expeditions, a lot of the vehicles now have it. Um, does it work for you? Are you happy with it? Is it helpful to you? Or do you prefer just trying to learn it the old fashioned way so you can do it yourself? Um, for me, I think it's a skill worth learning simply because it'll give you the confidence to do it when you're in a vehicle that does not have a system like that if, if you need it. So basically, if you rely too heavily on it, if you hop into a vehicle that doesn't have an assist, how are you going to deal with backing up? Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, for me, it's been relatively informative. It, it helps me at least understand the system's capabilities and some of its limitations. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.